Hey everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all well and welcome to the Citizen Channel and our part two of a, a Moments in Time feature where we've been looking at Mr Joe Royal as a City player in the in the mid 70s. Please, if you're new to this channel and you've not watched part one, go back and watch part one. Go and seek part one out. Watch that first, please. If you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button. Push the bell notifications so we know these little citizen vlogs are coming out. That's absolutely fantastic. And please leave your comments. Uh, always great to have uh, comments and know you're out there, your feedback. It's great to have views, but it's nice for you to take part. Obviously, I want you to comment on things that I say or things that you remember about these. These certainly my history vlogs, etc. That'd be fantastic. And if you can leave a thumbs up, superb. I mean, I, I do. It is nice to know you're out there. So even if you haven't got time to leave a comment, please, it only takes a split second to leave a thumbs up. I'm much, much appreciated if you enjoy this. Yes, so Joe Royal. So we got to we got to the League Cup semi-final, didn't we, in 1976. Um, obviously, Joe Royal had just picked a game against West Ham as his favourite game. 17th of January 1976, one of his favourite games for City. That, he was probably at the peak of his powers. Tony Buck was gushing about him how well he was doing. Uh, and of course, in the Middlesbrough second leg of the League Cup semi-final, he had he scored one of the goals to put City help put City through to Wembley that season. And obviously, even though he didn't score at Wembley, but obviously his typical target man shifting obviously up uh, up front for City in that final against Newcastle. So he did have a really good season. scored scored a few goals and was all more or less an ever ever present from. Uh, Probably the last two for the last two thirds of the season. Um, in 19, uh, journalist Peter Garner in the in the City program did an end of term report on the last home game of the season, a three one win against Arsenal, and he wrote uh, an end of term uh, end of end of season performance rating or end of term look back, if you like, a school report if you like on the, on how Joe Royal had done, and it, it read. <clears throat> Excuse me. Joe Royal is another who paid off a big debt this season. Once Joe broke through the scoring barrier, he started to look top class material again and had his crowning glory when recalled to the England squad last week. A deserved honour for a season into which he has put much hard work and endeavour. So, yeah, after, his, after we spoke about his first sort of half season, didn't really go to plan as such, but uh, he really, in the 75 76 season, obviously. He went on to, to, to many things, and obviously uh, including obviously the England recall as well, which was fantastic for him. And of course, optimism on and off the pitch was quite high for 1976-77. I mean, um, the City fans were up for it. Uh, season ticket sales were booming. 40,000 crowds plus on average were regular main road. And it looked all good, didn't it? And 76, 77, of course, we were going to come very, very close, weren't we? We were going to come a, a reasonably close second to to a, well, a, a dynamic Liverpool at the time, unfortunately. And Joe Royal had continued that season, 76, 77, to, to keep up his good form. He made his European debut for City against uh, Juventus on the 15th of September 1976. Um, I miss this, typically. I mean, you know, talk about typical City, you've got typical Bernard. Obviously, I'd booked a holiday months and months before, but obviously I was actually holidaying in Italy when we played at Main Road, and obviously I was back in Manchester when we played the second leg in Italy. So, typical Bernard, I, did, uh, I actually missed this, but uh, I did actually watch the game. With uh, some Italian waiters in Italy who were quite impressed with the Kipax, they thought the Kipax was quite scary looking at night, which I think it, I think it was as well if I remember back. And certainly when I used to sit in the plat lane and look across to the Kipax and all the cigarette lighters lighting up, and on a misty night, it was quite quite intimidating. I thought the Kipax. So yeah, I mean these waiters had the same opinion as I did about the Kipax, and which is quite interesting. Yeah, so. He was a star man in that game, uh, a 1 0 win over Juventus. Juventus couldn't handle him. I mean, the actual Juventus players said he, he, he was a nightmare to handle. And we did, um, unfortunately, only win 1 0, which sadly wasn't enough, wasn't it? What was it to, uh, to take us through that day? But he was a star man and played really well. Uh, but unfortunately, we, we, we lost 2 0 at Juventus, so we went out on that. By the 29th of December game against Liverpool at Main Road, Joe, Joe reflected really on, he, on his ups and downs in recent years, on his, on, uh, in the years he's been at City for uh, in the article in the match, match programme. So I'm just going to read from that now. 
Uh, turn the clock back to Christmas 74 and strike a draw roll couldn't have been described as a picture of festive fun. Disillusioned with his empty prospects as a reserve player with Everton, he was faced with a decision he was convinced he'd hate to leave Merseyside, his birthplace, his background and the city of his soccer breakthrough. After being at Goodison Park for 10 years, I couldn't see me settling in anywhere else in football, but I knew there was nothing for me at Everton. I'd reached a low state, I'd become disinterested, so I knew I would have to leave. That's why I accepted the chance to join City, he remembers. Today he still lives on Merseyside with his wife and two sons. But the low-key mood that prevailed in his final days at Everton has now been wiped out. Jorall looks and talks like a man content with his lot. In those two years, despite turbulent areas, he has leapt from the, from the file of forgotten footballers to become an England international again. Three caps earned this year and played his part in the triumph that brought the League Cup to Main Road. It's been the rebirth of a career for me. I never thought I would say it, said Joe, but the move has been most enjoyable. I never believed I would get Everton out of my system after so long, but now I feel as though it's City I've been at for 10 years. That's how settled the club has made me, he said happily. On Boxing Day 74, Joe was turning out at Anfield. Uh, the hopes of a firecracker start from the £200,000 catch were never fulfilled. City whimpered their way home, hammered 4-1 with Colin Bell collecting a mere consolation goal. When I first joined City, there was a long, lean spell. It was due to a complete lack of fitness and confidence on my part. I lost both together. It was a strange time getting off to such a slow start. I was so, so glad to see the end of last season. I knew people were expecting goals from me, and that's why I was signed. I was aware that what was being said when I wasn't scoring. It affected me inwardly, yes. I was sensitive to remarks, but I tried never let, to let it show outwardly, and I certainly never took the burden home to my family, he revealed. Revealed. Joe notched once that season against Birmingham, a paltry return for City's investment. Yet one incident against Liverpool in his December debut debut match changed the whole situation. Yeah, he recalls the fact he missed that early goal. Today, as he faced Liverpool for the third consecutive Christmas fixture between the clubs, he's in the shape and mood to make amends. Perhaps he can add something to the list of happy memories he's accumulated in his time at Main Road. The good times at City outweigh the bad. The League Cup final was memorable. I remember the boss, Tony Buck, telling me of my call-up at the end of last season when we were travelling up to a league match at Newcastle. I did say in a blunt Merseyside fashion, he should stop taking the mickey. I was floored when I found out it was the truth. There was no way I'd ever thought of being a candidate back for England. It seems Don Revy decided he wanted a balance in the squad and at times would need a target man and viewed me in this category. He had Stuart Pearson, who was a lot nippier than me, but not as meatily built for the task of being a target man, Joe assessed. Joe got his chances, so. You know, when Joe was asked to add other highlights to his City days, he can't resist admitting, I would be dishonest if I didn't say that the game at Main Road against Everton last February gave me a lot of personal pleasure. We won 3-0, Joe scored, but admitted to add that. And that was a special occasion for me, he said. We've now played Everton four times since I joined City, and they haven't yet beaten us. No, I'm still not hung up about them, but I think most people realise they are my pleasure that these results is so satisfying. So it sounded sound like a happy chappy, didn't it, at that stage? And uh, actually, we drew with the with Liverpool that day, and he actually scored the goal in the one-one draw. Uh, and again, it was a noticeable, noticeable. That was a depressing day for City fans, especially I was there that night, or day or night, obviously, the, whenever it was. And um, an icy main road. We Liverpool equalised with a with a David Watson own goal in the last couple of minutes which was devastating we deserved to win that game Liverpool played really well City played really well but obviously it was more memorable for that Dave Watson equaliser unfortunately that uh, equalised the Joe Royal goal but City were up there City were fighting weren't they uh, his goal against United on the 6th of March 1977 was just a consolation goal. It dented our title hopes that season. We were doing really well, but to go to Old Trafford and get beat at a time when we, we had a good record against United was quite depressing. Um, so the cracks, just a little bit uh, with the team, obviously, that season, were a little bit was beginning to show and didn't quite manage to overhaul Liverpool, unfortunately. And perhaps the, the cracks in Joe was showing as well. He didn't, I say, he didn't score after that game from March 1977. So things were a bit a bit dodgy before the 77-78 season. So he'd hit this peak, he'd hit this peak mid-season, but obviously it start, the goals dried up again. Was there a problem? Uh, financial cracks were also showing for City before the 77-78 season. And um, Swales had always tried to invest, and perhaps, but so, you know, 
decisions about player purchases, etc., and wages. It all, it all, we'd always struggle. So there's a bit crack, a bit, a few cracks were showing financially as well, and some young players were being shown the door. We were, I think, we got rid of our B team. We did have an A and B team uh, to save costs. We got rid of the B team. So obviously, you'd think that obviously they're gonna take a look at some of the players' wages. And Joe Royal, no doubt, was on one of the was one of the best players at the time. So obviously, that was gonna come in, gonna be looked at, wasn't it, at some stage? But strangely enough, even though we were struggling, I mean, Swales did this. He always, you know, always tried to look for the headliner, didn't he? And he brought in Mike Shannon that season, the seventy seven seventy eight season. So more competition for Joe Royal. I think this put Joe Royal's uh, nose a little bit out of joint. As I said, he'd not had the greatest end to the season before. So I think they're bringing a Mike Shannon. I think the writing was beginning to come on the wall. Uh, off the pitch, the fans were still there. We're still averaging on 40,000 crowds. The crowds were still there. We're still selling plenty of season tickets. But Joe Royal would only start six league games by the end of October, despite seemingly, and this may be just a bit of smoke screen, in negotiations to extend his contract. But uh, whether that was a smoke screen or not, who knows. He scored the only goal in the win at West Ham on the 27th of August. Uh, but was not in the squad for the next two games, including a 3-1 derby win over United on the 10th of September. He did return for the QPR away game on the 17th of September and scored again in a 1-1 draw, so leaving him out didn't do any harm, did it? Uh, but sadly, again, our UEFA, our UEFA trip died at the first leg again. I mean, he couldn't inspire City in the second leg at Vidzeb Lodz, even though he did start the game. It ended up nil-nil. Uh, and for the first first leg of the tie, a 2-2 draw, he was actually on the subs bench. He actually wasn't in the team. So with the likes of kids, Shannon, Stewart, Barnes featuring, perhaps Royal was beginning to feel a little bit left out and... Uh, Ironically, his last game for City, his last, last full game for City, will be against the team he made his debut against, of course, and that team that kept cropping up on the 29th of October 1977. Uh, he, he played in a 3 1 win over Liverpool, which again, he was on the score sheet again with Shannon and Kidd alongside him, but he'd not featured in the previous three games to that. So again, there was something wrong, wasn't there? All, all wasn't right. Um, with Joe Royal and City, but every time he got a game, he seemed to be scoring. But he still didn't, still didn't save him. Uh, in his program notes, manager book didn't actually name names uh, for this this Liverpool game, but he, he did say that too many players were unfortunately off form. This was despite City after twelve games still sitting fifth in the table. So, but he wasn't overly impressed with what was going on. So he had a few problems with the players by that stage. And by November, with book, uh, Tony Buck citing limited opportunities, um, he put uh, Joe Royal on the transfer list. Uh, Stewart was already on it at that stage as well. Dennis Stewart was on the transfer list and uh, uh, Joe Royal joined him. Uh, there certainly was no extension for him, was there, on that, on that basis? And on, in November that year, he firstly went on loan to Bristol City. And then moved to Bristol City, and of course uh, it wasn't quite over with his links to City that season. Obviously, we'd uh, we'd beaten Bristol City at Main Road early in the season, but uh, obviously we did have to play him at Ashton Gate, didn't we? So I think you know probably what's coming. But um, after being signed by manager Alan Dix at Bristol, Royal made an immediate impact. He scored for all four goals in a four-one Bristol City win over Middlesbrough in his debut in his debut game. That was while whilst he was on loan. That was before he even signed. Uh, but sadly, this did increase the pressure. I mean, he did, did comment about this, and obviously the expectations from the Bristol City fans were, were massive after that. I mean, you score four on your debut. I mean, you score one on you know City's debut, but uh, you know to score four, to score four on a debut would be absolutely tremendous. And he did really struggle after that. But obviously, by the time City visited on the seventeenth of February, nineteen seventy-eight, there was a crowd of just over twenty-five thousand eight hundred and thirty-four. I was I was there that day. Um, yeah, it was a two-two draw. So obviously, with Kid and Booth scoring for City, but you you could have guessed it, couldn't you? And obviously, the two goals for Bristol City were both scored, of course, by Joe Royal. He'd actually scored a couple in the three games previous to that, so he'd had 
gone back on the scene after a bit of a, a bit of a low after his four goal debut. He actually uh, he'd have gone a few games without scoring, but he'd started to score again before he met City. But Tony Buck made some comments in the City programme on the 25th of February 1978 at a home game against Everton uh, about the game and Joe Royal. He said, the team were magnificent at Ashton Gate. Two goals down in the opening six minutes. Yeah, Joe he scored two minutes. He could have done an hat trick really, couldn't he, Joe? But uh, he must have eased off after six minutes. Yeah, City was two nil down after six minutes they showed tremendous resilience and were full value for the 2-2 finish we are rarely caught out in the manner we were at Bristol Joe Real delighted in doing the damage against us which is natural for a player appearing against his old club yeah <laughs> again there you go I mean as in Francis Lee was delighted when he scored against us obviously Joe Real was obviously delighted when he scored he scored against us as well there's, there's no sort of holding your head and not celebrating in those days he snapped up his first goal from a near post corner, which is the only occasion I can recall as being caught in this manner. We were looking for offside when Joe got it, got his next. I'm not saying the goal was offside, but we were trying to spring the trap and thought it had worked. Joe came into the dressing room after the match and congratulated his ex teammates on the way they had fought back. I think everyone who witnessed the game will have been impressed with those qualities. Yes, I mean that was uh, so. Say Joe hadn't Joe hadn't finished with us, had he? So. But all credit to him. Um, yeah, he's. Uh, we were to see him again, weren't we? Uh, his league appearances for City. He played 99 in the league with 23 goals, uh, Joe Royal. FA Cup played 6, scored 2. League Cup, he played 12, scored 6. The Euro European games, obviously the four games, uh, two, two games in each year. He played in four no goals. And obviously in total, 121 appearances for City with uh, 31 goals. Yeah, I think despite early problems and the the obvious sidelining by Buck during the 77-78 season, all City fans have good memories of Joe Royal. It's a sort of time, a time I was getting to a lot of away games as well, so I saw Joe Royal a lot, obviously, during that period. Uh, and I had good memories of Joe Royal. I'm sure he, and I think we know he enjoyed his spell. And of course, he was more than happy to come back many years later. Was it almost 20 years later? To become our manager again and have, have some more wonderful memories and moments. But yeah, that's another moment in time, isn't it, when he came back as a manager. But uh, that's Mr Joseph Royal. So thank you for joining me for this Moments in Time special, this part two of the Joe Royal special. As a player for Manchester City, I say, was, we'll touch upon the manager perhaps in, a, in another Moments in Time. Please check my links on screen. And if you follow or friend me on Facebook and Twitter, I do check every couple of days and follow friend everyone, follow and friend everyone back on there. And if you check my playlist, I do stuff on movies and TV dramas and little quizzes, etc. So if you're into that sort of thing or have an interest in that, please check those out as well. And or, or if you've got any friends or relatives who are interested in movies and TV, please point them in my direction. That'd be very much appreciated. And my little day job, I have a website, moviegamenostalgia.com, for old rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s, and board games on there as well. So if you can check that out, I'd be very, very much appreciated. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments. Is there any, any special memories you have of Joe um, his time as a player at City? And please, uh, all I can ask is whatever you're going to do with the rest of the day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. Until we meet again here on the Citizen Channel with a City past or present, please stay safe, Blues. Bird saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching.